along. Um, uh, people can ask me how I do the wood grain effect that I use on the bottom of my weapons that I paint. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to do it for yourselves. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It's a pretty useful technique. I mean, it's not just for weapons, you know, you can use it for anything, painting scenery or, you know, whatever really. Whatever. That's wood, I guess. Hope you guys Right, so let's get started. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys this technique using this Brick Arms Sabre uh, shotgun. Uh, as you can see, I've already base coated the stock with this Vallejo Black Surface Primer. I just painted it on. Uh, for this, you're going to need three colors. Uh, my choices are for the base, I'm going to use Rhinox Hide by Citadel. Then for the midtone, I'm going to be using Mournfang Brown, also by Citadel. And then for the highlights, I'm going to use Citadel XV88. And then this is an optional thing, but I'm going to use black, which I'm going to mix with Rhinox Hide to make some darker lines in the bottom. You're also going to need some pretty thin paint brushes. Uh, here I'm going to be using the Vallejo 3-0 and 2-0 Red Sable Kalinsky paint brushes. I mean, Citadel Fine Detail Brush should work just as well. Okay, cool. So let's get started. Just as a note, you can use any colors here. I mean, this will obviously give you one specific type of wood. It'll be more like a walnut finish, I guess. I don't know. I don't know wood that well, to be honest. But, I mean, by combining different colors, when you do this technique, you can get a different look of wood, if that makes sense. You know, you can get darker wood or lighter wood. It just depends on what colors you use. But, I mean, that's all up to you. This is personally my favorite. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and base coat the all right so that's the base code done we're just gonna give this a chance to dry before we move on to the next step all right so once that's had a chance to dry you're gonna take your mid-tone, in this case, Mournfang Brown, and just shake that up nicely, and then you're going to want to mix that with your base color, Rhinox Hide, in this case, and you're going to want to do about a one-to-one -one mix. Okay, get a nice color like that. Okay, then what you're going to want to do is just dip your brush in your, paint, your water pot, just thin this out a little bit, just so that it's got a nice semi-translucent one, whatever, yeah. Okay, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your brush, and now you're going to start painting on the wood grain lines, but it's important that your lines follow the natural flow of the wood, so in this case I'm going to be painting in that direction, because that makes the most sense with this piece. Obviously, with certain pieces, you can sort of do your own thing. But generally, the wood grain lines would follow lengthways, not width ways, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm just going to paint on some lines here. The best way to do this is to just draw your brush out like that through the paint, just a little bit, so that there's not too much. You can twirl it if that makes it easier, just so that you're getting nice thin lines off of it, and you can just dip your brush in as you need. Now there's no real structure to this, just think of like tree branches or whatever, as you're painting. You don't want to make it too structured and follow a pattern in like a square or whatever, because then it's going to look unnatural. So, sort of just go with it. Alright, so that's our first layer done. You can't really see much at this point, but it'll start to become a bit clearer soon. So we're just going to give that a chance to dry, and then we're going to move on to the next coat. Alright, so now that that's had a chance to dry, you're going to take your mid-tone again, Mourn Mournfang Brown, and you're going to add that to the mix you currently have. If it's dried up already, that's right. Just make it approximately twos to one Mournfang Brown to Rhinox Hide or 
your mid turn to your base color. Okay, then you're going to get some more water from your pot. Just thin it out again. This isn't an exact science, but I would say make this ever so slightly thinner than the previous mix. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to try, you need a bright light for this to be able to see the lines you originally painted. So try and paint inside the lines, but not cover them completely. So you're almost painting a line over the existing line, but slightly thinner. This way we're going to build up the highlight. Doesn't matter if you go out the lines slightly, you can just go with it, it's not a big deal. Sometimes it is a bit difficult to paint lines, just paint where you think they should go, it doesn't have to be exact. As I said before, it's not a sign. Okay, so now you might be able to see this, I don't know, I can see it, I'm not sure if you can, but there are some slides lines becoming visible there now, now that I've painted this coat over. So we're just going to give that a chance to dry for the next few seconds and then we can move on to the next step of the process. Make sure you clean your brush off very well between steps because you don't want your brush to get damaged by excess paint on it or whatever. Alright, so now we can start incorporating the highlight. I'm going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Mornfang Brown, make sure you clean your brush between adding the paint things, you don't want to mix paint inside your paint pot. And so it's one to one mix of Mornfang Brown and XV88, my highlight color. I think that may be a bit more XV88. It doesn't have to be exactly one is to one, it's just approximately. There we go. And then just like last time, I'm gonna thin this out a bit. That looks good. What I did there was I just dabbed off the excess paint from my brush just so that there's not too much paint on because it's easier to add more paint to your brush than it is to remove it, especially once you've painted onto the piece you're working on. Okay, so now I'm just going to follow the same process as the previous step. I'm just going to paint over the existing lines, but again, thinner than the last time. I'm just going to thin this a bit more because it's a bit thick at the moment. See some lines coming through there nicely. Just gonna give that a moment to dry. And then we can move on to the final bit, which would be a pure highlight of XV88. I'm gonna get that ready in the meantime because this will dry very quickly because it's been watered down. Okay, now for this step, it's just very slight highlights, not everywhere, just sort of in the center, not all the way to the edge of each wood grain line, just in the middle. That's too much. You can just wipe it off if you make a mistake, because it's very watered down. Or you can even wipe it off if you just put too much paint, and if you've, it'll pretty much wipe off everything except for what's on the line, which is pretty neat. There we have most of it done. Now what I'm just going to do is take this this piece here, this mix. I'm just going to mix that up so that it's almost like a wash. And I'm going to paint this into the darker areas of the wood just to give it some more light. If you like, you can make the base coat slightly lighter. If you want 
a lighter wood. It's all just down to personal preference, really. And then another optional step, if you like, you can add some black paint. Here I'm adding Vallejo model color black into this mix. I think I might have added a bit too much. Way too much. That paint just flows out of there. But you pretty much want a one-to-one -one mix with rhino oxide. So this is for if you didn't do the wash step, then you would take this mix, which is almost black, but it's a very, very dark brown. And you would add that into the middle of the areas you applied the rhino oxide wash to. Otherwise, you are also if you did the step that I did before where you make a wash with the rhino oxide mix, you can just take some rhino oxide, water it down a bit. Get your brush point very nice and thin if you can. There we go, that looks good. And now I'm just gonna paint this into the areas where I added the wash in very thin lines just to create a bit of depth. Alrighty, and there is your wood effect. I mean, using different colors will give you different results. Using more lines will give you a lighter wood finish, less wood grain lines, a darker finish. It's all up to you, obviously, personal decisions. You can go as realistic or as exaggerated as you like. I personally prefer a bit of a blend, um, but yeah, that's pretty much how the technique works. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I'll be showing a few examples of how my wood technique looks on the finished figures that I've made. Oh,